in the west of Pakistan and uh, good evening to participants from the east of the country. Uh, we expect to have a very large number of them uh, joining us. It's going to be a full forum soon. Uh, but I just wanted to thank uh, someone I always cherish, someone who have uh, who has contributed immensely in developing scientific capacity of people all around the globe, and uh, and a scientist of very high caliber. Professor Dr. Rasul Chaudhry is known for the excellence uh, in science his motivation and perseverance and his global view of science. At the same time, his uh, very strong connection with the developing world to build their capacity. And that makes him uh, uniquely different from others because he has not only uh, produced good science, but also has helped other to produce good science. I'm very, very honored that I know him since uh, long. And uh, I'm equally honored that I always received lots of support, guidance, and mentorship from him. Uh, he is uh, someone uh, who has always helped younger people. And one example of his uh, immense help and contribution is the establishment of a stem cell laboratory in University of Karachi, where I work as the director. We're very fortunate to have him. He trained uh, many younger people. And today he's going to deliver a lecture uh, in the series of emerging technology abstract lecture series, uh, mainly by top people working in at the frontiers of science and technology. The title of his presentation is Preclinical Studies to Treat uh, Degenerative Diseases Using Stem Cell Therapy. An abstract is already presented to you. Uh, let me just uh, present to you a very brief introduction of Professor Chaudhry. Uh, though his introduction is very long indeed because he has been uh, very productive throughout his career and has uh, worked on different aspects of science. Dr. Chaudhry is a professor of molecular biology at the Department of Biological Sciences. He is also the co-director of Auckland University Fairmont Institute for Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine, which is among the top institutions in Rochester, Michigan, USA. His research focus on stem cell and regenerative medicine. He is specially interested in the regulation of stemness and differentiation of stem cell and stem cell-based biologics for tissue engineering and therapies for degenerative diseases. Let me tell you that uh, why we consider that as uh, one of the most uh, uh, cherished and very important technologies to be introduced to you because it's now widely recognized that the future medicine would largely be a reg regenerative medicine. And Professor Chaudhry's expertise in this field is certainly praiseworthy. With this, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Ulam Sucha. Doctor, over to you. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate. Um, I but I'm particularly um, thankful for your kind introduction. I don't think I deserve that, but nevertheless, uh, you have been always very kind and generous, uh, and your uh, this word of wisdom and the word of, word of appreciation. I really cherish very much and our friendship and our affiliation goes a long way as you mentioned. I hope I will be able to justice a little bit. Um, it's a little bit too early here to get up and talk to you. Um, in, uh, nevertheless, uh, it is again my pleasure and I, uh, I'm very appreciative of giving me this opportunity to present some of our work, recent work. Um, some of um, has been published, some is not, still not published. So uh, before I start, uh, first of all, I should say good afternoon and assalamu alaikum to everybody. And thank you for attending, those who are attending. And I'm very grateful for all of you. 
And I, I hope we have how much time we have just to begin with, so I can uh, time myself. I think it's about, about 45 to 50 minutes, and then we okay. would spare some time for, okay. uh, for question and answer also. And there okay. would be I'll, some question in the chat box also, also. Okay, okay. I will manage that way, and hopefully if I may have to skip some slide, I will do that. So um, to begin with, let's uh, let me share. Uh, can you see my uh, slide on uh, my screen? Yes, yes sir, we, we can, can see, see your slides. Okay. So uh, let's see here. Okay. To start with, um, uh, our focus has been on the uh, cell therapy, uh, particularly using stem cell. And with the advent of our advances in the stem cell has really provided us a great opportunity in this area. And as you are familiar, all of that, just a quick introduction to stem cell. There are three different types of stem cell. We can isolate from the embryo or we can also get it from the, um, from the, from the adult uh, sources. Um, I won't name them, but you can visualize it uh, just to save time. And then also you can take the differentiated cell or terminal cell and introduce um, um, uh, the transcription factor listed for three of them here, SOX4, SOX2, uh, I'm sorry, OCT4, SOX2, and NANOG. Um, and you can generate yourself in the laboratory IPS into uh, induced pluripotent stem cell. Um, but the focus of our um, recent study has been mostly on the fetal or perinatal MSCs. So these MSCs can be isolated, uh, cells can be a mesenchymal stem cell, can be isolated from the amniotic fluid, umbilical cord, and cord blood as well as placenta. So um, let me go to the next one. So um, actually we have been able to isolate uh, the MSC or mesenchymal stem cell from uh, adult sources are listed around the left side, the muscles, bone, and adipose tissue, and peripheral blood. And you can also isolate from the perinatal or uh, fetal sources, which are listed on the right side of the screen, uh, such as umbilical cord, umbilical cord, blood, um, placenta, amniotic fluid, and tissues. Um, we have been fortunate that we have worked with some very good uh, people from the, clin um, from the medical field. They have been able to provide um, a very uh, conti uh, continuous and very extensive source for the umbilical cord, cord blood, and so forth. We have over about 500 different samples. So far, we have been able to get, I mean, uh, the cord, cord tissues, uh, blood, and we have been able to isolate um, many of these uh, cells. And, some of those cells, we have been able to find that they're very proliferative. They have, they are, uh, we can actually make them um, grow as much or as long as we can grow em embryonic stem cells. As you know, the embryonic stem cell can be grown indefinitely, whereas most of the mesenchymal stem cell can only grow for a few generations and after that they stop growing, particularly the adult MSCs were very limited in in terms of their potential to grow, uh, proliferate or self-renew as well as differentiate. Nevertheless, we are able to do, uh, take these MSC from these cold uh, sources, a cold blood or, or umbilical cord, human umbilical cord, and actually use them to, to, to study or test them for various uh, uh, treatment of various diseases. And some of those diseases which are studied in our uh, laboratory and our group here um, are listed in this slide, um, like um, mus muscular dystrophy, um, multiple sclerosis, pain management, and intervertebral disc degenerate, I mean, uh, disease, uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and regenerative, or, or sorry, uh, retinal degenerative diseases. 
And I'm gonna uh, touch a little bit or scratch the surface a little bit about the um, IVD and MS and RDD. These are the uh, three um, example I'm gonna present. Um, there are a lot of work done on the other aspect as well, but uh, time uh, is limited. So I would maybe able to do these three if it possible. So the first will start with this degenerative disc disease and uh, abbreviated as DDD. As you know, the DD is called or disc, uh, de uh, degenerative disc disease caused by the degeneration of intervertebral disc. And there, uh, it is expected that about 90% of the population will be affected by this disease during their lifetime. So one way or the other, you do get either due, either due to age or some trauma or some accident, or some genetics too, uh, of course. And these are the causes are listed here. And in this particular disease, you know that in the, your spine, you have the vertebrae and vertebrae, in between the vertebrae, there is an in, intervertebral disc. And that disc, particularly uh, in the, uh, Inside disc, there is a called nucleus pulposus, as you can see that cross section of that NP. That is actually a spongy um, uh, stuff like a sponge, which control and uh, uh, give you flexibility and it gives you also um, uh, the balance uh, in your vertebrae. And this loss of this in, uh, NP or nucleus pulposus. Um, around that is this annulus fibrosis, and this is what, what makes the basically intervertebral disc. As you can see here, these various stages of this disease, the healthy disc, you can see that these um, dark yellow um, are the, the nucleus uh, intervertebral disc, and this is the in, um, vertebrae. And you can see at stage one, the disc started to thin. Uh, become smaller and eventually you can see that it started further progress in degeneration and you know you see how very little disc left and finally your vertebrae started to rub against each other see bone basically and that is when when you have a very painful um, um, uh, and pay in the back and you pay and also in addition to that this de degeneration there is some other um, uh, other causes of this uh, pain as well as you can see here bulging of the disc of course the degeneration there this is the normal disc you can see and you can have a bulging of disc you can also herniated disc as you can thinning of disc and so forth and so these all are few examples of um, the this disease and which basically leads to uh, the severe pain and it sometimes it's very uh, not tolerable and people have to take narcotics and so they all they have their own effect and therefore uh, there is no actually treatment for this particular disease because once the tissue is lost or the nucleus pulposus is lost uh, there is nothing you can do. Other than recently when uh, the, we or another has started, even some clinical study has started to use cell therapy to regenerate the nucleus pulposus. And the problem with the nucleus pulposus is that this is a, a, a vascular area. That means there are no vessel and the cells which were produced, uh, which are responsible for producing nucleus pulposus they are very active earlier in your age, but by the time you are 16 to 19 years old, your disc has developed and nucleus pulposus has produced whatever amount was need, uh, required. And after that, the cell started slowly to uh, the nucleus pulposus like cell, we call them, or NP cell abbreviated, and they started to degenerate. And after that, if they, this NP degenerate, then there are no cellular structure, or there are no cells which can reproduce it. So therefore, this is a major problem. And people have tried, uh, let's see here. Um, that, yeah, here, before we go further, we can see that here, the actually the, the human spine, and you can see the normal disc, and this is the MRI. 
of the spine, and that is one way of diagnosing uh, the, uh, the uh, disc degeneration. And here, as you can see, the degenerated discs, they get blackened. And it can be uh, in the, uh, in the, the, throughout the spine of the back. So uh, people have used a various way to regenerate the disc um, in animal model and also has now tried to use MSC, mesenchymal stem cell, uh, to treat uh, the DDD uh, or this disease. Uh, but mo uh, most often the MSCs are very good for paracrine effect. Uh, they do not survive actually in avascular environment of intervertebral disc. So uh, we actually uh, applied a different approach. Instead of using MSC, we did test MSC as well, along with the uh, other approach. The, we differentiated these cells. Uh, this is an overall, which I'm gonna, uh, view of what I'm gonna talk about this disease, how we approach this in an animal model. Uh, where we have the rabbit model, where, which was degenerated, disc was degenerated. And then we differentiated the MSE into uh, the nucleus pulposus like cells, which called them NPC. And we then labeled them with a dye with a pKH 26 so that we can track the cells when we, after injecting into the rabbit. So here you can see the rabbit bunny on the uh, in the OR, and there is uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Perez Kuda, he's a spine surgeon and my, uh, one of my students, um, or colleague, actually, she's also uh, now a PhD. Um, and they were working together to actually inject or implant these cells into these NP cells into, into the intervertebral disc. And you can see here that that's where uh, this is a picture taken or photo taken by fluoroscope, and you can see that the cells are being injected. After cells were injected, we then monitored the, uh, the animal for several weeks, and then they were, they were then um, sacrificed, and we then looked for the, um, the, the, the regeneration. And before, um, obviously, we sacrifice the animal, we also wanted to see what happening to the spine or the de intervertebral disc of the rabbit. And we, um, uh, here is what we did, basically, again, repeating that, what we did, we have this um, uh, L4 and L5 and L3, and four and two and three. These are the rabbit spine of vertebrae. And what we did was that we, um, we caused the degeneration by stabbing the disc with a needle. And in two weeks, the disc will degenerate. And then we will inject the cells. And that's where we injected the cell. We use the MSC and sometimes we may, you may see sometimes we have used CPC or NPC. It is, these are the same cell, but the different names in the publication we started. And then after we perform these studies, after eight weeks, we then sacrifice the animal and then open up this intervertebral disc. And then we then look for uh, uh, the, we harvested the disc and analyzed the intervertebral disc. So our end point of these, this experiment was that, of course, we did the MRI to visualize what the changes are happening before we sacrifice the animal. After the animals were sacrificed, we then look for the one of the uh, hallmark of this NP is that it can absorb a lot of water. So we can measure actually the water content. Also, we can uh, the 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 component which absorb the water is this what called the sulfated uh, glycose aminoglycan. And higher the content, more water will be absorbed. So there is this is something we can analyze uh, biochemically. And then we looked for the histology also structure of the disc. So see what happening to the NP um, or the intervertebral disc. And then 
also look for the fate of the transplanted cell. These are human cells, they're not uh, rabbit cells. So we can really, um, uh, we can tag them, we can immunostain them with the antibody for human um, proteins. And then we look also for the expression of the human genes or markers. And then we look at uh, finally, what is the mechanism of nucleus pulposus regeneration is. So here you can see the MRI analysis of the rabbit. Uh, these are a little more complicated, but if you focus on this, this is the axial view and this is sagittal view, but I would like you to focus on that. The green one are the normal. And this is the disc, as you can see that there's a, a whitish uh, tissue here. That is the disc, okay? And in the degenerated, this is a degenerated. There, there is, there, it's get blackened, uh, this, uh, once degenerate, the disc is, and uh, NP is degenerated uh, um, or desiccated, you can see. And again, when, uh, when we injected the cell, and you can see that the, the whitish uh, tissue is re returning back, as you can see, that's similar to the control. And we look at that also the height, we can measure the height, Okay, the when the disc get degenerated, the uh, the intervertebral um, uh, disc has shrunk and the height is reduced. And you can see there's uh, the control, the punctured, and then MSC treated and NP treated. You can see with the M NPC, the height has almost recovered back. Again, also look at the mean NP intensity with NP intensity when nucleus pulposes. The MRI can tell us also. This is what the what the, the physician do um, when they when they look at your spine or uh, human spine uh, MRI, and then they can measure the how much the height is, how much the NP content, is. and you can see that again when we treated with the NP, see that the height, I mean the intensity has been uh, intense extensively imp improved. So. After um, these pre, uh, finding, I mean, these observations, then we basically uh, perform the post-transplantation analysis of the intervertebral disc. After sacrificing the animal, we first did the physiochemical analysis of the rabbit. As you can see, physically, we look at what we see. What uh, when after uh, this is this is these are the. Uh, this, uh, intervertebral disc, which were injected, as you can see, uh, the uh, control disc. Just we start with this right here. So you, can, if you have a control, mean that this was a naive, which was not treated or not stabbed, so intact disc, and you can remove the nucle nucleus pulposus. It's a small disc, which within the intervertebral uh, in inside the annulus, and you can remove it. And you can see that when you have a puncture one here, so uh, they, this will this become much reduced. And when we have a sham that it's like a punctured one also, but we added some uh, medium into that instead of cells. And here, when we put the MSC or injected the MSC, you can see mesenchymal stem cell, uh, the, the size has been increased. But look at this one, we had the nucle uh, the NPC or uh, nucleus pulposus like cells. Uh, you can see that disc has significantly improved. Uh, give the uh, kind of idea, um, don't be confused, but just the, there's a little more clear picture than I, I would have liked it, than the control. Uh, so after that, we also look at the uh, gag content, as I mentioned earlier, that this is the material which absorbs the actually water. And we can see here the, you can see the uh, percentage of the um, NP con uh, content is the control. This is the CPC or NPC. And here you have the water content. Again, you can see recovery of water content. And here you have the gag content. So you can see the wall, all these parameters, which are really measure of the, uh, the um, quality of the nucleus pulposus and or the disc, they have improved by the injection of the um, CPC or NPC 
cells, which are, are much better than the MSE. As I mentioned, thus far, most places, uh, most study has been focused only on M MSE, but our approach has been seen to be more uh, effective. Then we look at the physical structure, actually structure of the, the um, nucleus pulposus um, by uh, sectioning the disc or nucleus pulposus into vertebral disc. This was uh, decalcified and the section was cut and then the, the, the um, section was stained with the H and E stain. And then we can see that control, you have a cellularity rabbit Unlike human rabbit does, um, a rabbit do rabbits do have these nucleus pulposus like cell in the intervertebrate disc, because they are only um, for for few few weeks or two, few months old. Um, when we puncture the disc, you can see that the cellularity is gone. The cells are gone. When we had M uh, injected MSC, you can see here the. NPC uh, has been, uh, you know, the 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 the, the, the cellularity has returned somewhat, but not to the extent uh, the uh, the control. And however, look at that when we have the NPC injectors, these there are a very nice good cellularity in cells. You can visualize by by this HLE staining. Then we also look at the expression of the uh, human gene in the uh, in the in the uh, injected um, discs. As you can see here, these are the markers for the uh, NP marker or nucleus pulposus marker, SOX9, ACAN, um, collagen2, FOXF1, and keratin19. As you can see that they all improved. These are the CPC or NPC, we call them. And uh, they, 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 they were, uh, they, okay, I'm sorry. This is prior to injecting the, so please uh, take me. So we, we wanna make sure that you are. So this is a, this is a, uh, the, the, and here is the CPC in vitro. This, you have to compare this one, uh, green, versus purple, and you can see that here. So there is a significant improvement in the expression of these in vivo when the cells were injected. So you can see that potentially there has been a growth uh, indication. This suggests that there is probably cell has been able to grow in and able to uh, they are functionally active, basically. That's what it means. So when, then we also look at the, what the mechanism of this uh, uh, NP regeneration is. Uh, we look at that there are some um, uh, signaling pathway which has been proposed by the study, uh, other studies, animal study, that one of the pathways, TGF, beta and SMED pathway, and we analyze those genes and we find interestingly that all those genes, which are, you can see here, the, um, the, uh, the CPC uh, treated um, and the, 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 this is the original one. And this is basically original mean the cells per se in vitro. And this is when they were injected. And you can see that the, the, these pathways or the genes for these pathways were much or uh, highly expressed, or they were upregulated. So the IV IVD transplanted with the CPC showed upregulation of gene involved in the TGF beta. So this is a, based on this, we we sort of proposed the following pathway that the uh, intervertebral disc injection by the CPC uh, activate this TGF beta pathway, and we because we then found that this SMAD2, uh, MEKK, and uh, four, SMAD4, uh, they were much activated or upregulated. However, a BMP, which could actually counter that, and that was inactivated, and we find that because there 
uh, the uh, ERK was inactive, um, the expression was quite low. So with this, I will conclude that these studies showed us that the transplanted NPC or CPC survived and they were able to integrate and disperse in the NPC. Some of the observation I was not able to show, um, uh, but the, the augmented cells were functionally active uh, because they were able to improve the cellularity, gag content, water content, extracellular matrix protein, and into uh, the, the disc height. And the transplanted intervertebrate disc expressed um, chondrogenic and NP specific markers, as was shown. Uh, so, the overall, our observation uh, or the results showed that the NPC or CPC were more efficacious than the MSC per se in regenerating the NP of the intervertebrate discs. So, I'm going to switch gear to the move on to the next one. And given the time, probably I may be able to only talk to you about these two only, and I may not be able to get to the next one. But this example, I mean, the, this study, uh, this set of studies deal with the treatment of uh, or testing these cells for treating the MS. Uh, but in uh, there is no MS disease in animal, but we, we and uh, of course, other people have developed a model which is called the EAE mouse model. Uh, and let me, um, before we uh, introduce that model, I, I'm going to explain a little bit about the, what is the multiple sclerosis is. As you know, the multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. In this, uh, the immune system in this disease attack the protective myelin sheath as you can see that this is the myelin layer or myelin sheet. This is the normal um, uh, the neuron. Uh, new, this is the nerve fiber, which is uh, protected by the myelin sheet. And it, it starts to degenerate by the immune cells. And you can see the nerve get exposed. So the myelin itself is produced by the Schwann cells. Um, which insulin, the axon, or the nerve fiber, or the oligodendrocyte. This is in the peripheral nervous system, and this is the, in the central nervous system. So this disease can cause permanent damage uh, or deterioration of the nerve, basically. And uh, chronic, the, uh, as I mentioned, this is a chronic disease, and there are about 400 thousand individuals in, in the U US which are affected by this disease and about 2.5 million uh, all over the world. And the onset, uh, unfortunately, the onset of the disease typically occurs very early on the age, unlike most other degenerative diseases, which are basically old age diseases. In this case, uh, the disease onset is 20 years to 40 years people are very young, they have to live, live with this disease for a long, long time. And there is a recurrent relapses, uh, that severe relapses that really make them uh, um, severely, it's very painful, obviously. There are factors that cause MS include genetics and environmental. And what happens here, you can see that the um, this is the healthy neuron. This is a cartoon showing, and the nerve uh, uh, or fiber um, are insulated by this um, in uh, the um, myelin layer, and the signal transduction is pretty good. And your your normal, you can hold hot cup in your um, coffee cup or tea cup without any problem. However. Uh, in case of multiple sclerosis, this disease affects many, many um, organs. Um, see, the, not only the, your nerves are affected, um, which could lead to the spinal cord, sensory uh, senses or muscles, and incontinence leads to some problem in severe cases, digestive problem, mouth uh, and speech problem, brain, um, so basically what happens is that these, uh, in, there is impairment of the signal due to the damaged myelin 
uh, layer and you can, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to touch hot, um, um, like a cup, a cup of coffee or something, how serve is it? So this is inflammatory, uh, the, the disease result, this is the, path, the pathology of this disease is that the inflammatory response uh, leads to the damage of the um, myelin first and then oligodendrocyte, which or the Schwann cell, which are responsible for producing the, the, the myelin layer. And with um, demyelination, obviously, uh, then axonal or nerve fiber damage and impure or reduced neuronal signaling. And many drugs have been used basically to cope with, with the pain, basically. But they all have side effects. There is no really cure for this. Again, uh, we um, to, 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 to deal with this. Um, uh, problem we defined, uh, is, is, uh, we use the similar approach in, um, for cell therapy. Um, people have tried MSE again, um, but uh, the, the, the um, mesenchymal stem cells to, to see the effect if, uh, in animal model. And also, also there are some clinical trial going on with MS. But the again problem is that MSC not found in the nervous system or the, in the brain. Uh, so uh, if you apply that, there could be some paracrine effect, but the damage which has happened, they can't do anything with that. So therefore we approach this again, similar um, approach which we use for IVD. We actually differentiate these cells to uh, NSC. This is uh, the, the uh, new, uh, neural stem cell and then use them uh, to test their efficacy in this model. So we characterize these uh, cell after differentiating. I didn't mention too much about the uh, NPC, which we did for IVD, but here we characterize them and we find that these NPC, um, NSC are able to, uh, the differentiator NSC are, uh, able to express the neural marker, they're, they're listed here. They are able to express also nest and twig, uh, twig one, vermint and PAX6. And we look at for the, this by immunostaining. You can see that these are MSE, no expression of these markers, but NSE do express those. Also, we look at them by Western blood. Uh, so after confirming this, we then establish this EAE model, which is an experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis um, in mouse. You can do that same thing, uh, similar model in rat as well. And that is, you can actually induce this EAE by injecting the MOG, which is a myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein or abbreviated MOG, if you inject that in about 10 days, the animal uh, will have this behavioral problem. You can see this is the, if you take the, uh, look at the animal after 10 days, around 10, 12 days. So um, normal animal have a very straight um, a tail, but the tail will limp. And that has been regarded as a score one, as you see in a limp tail. And in about two, uh, a few more days, as the disease progress, you will have this uh, uh, severe impairment of the writing of the, uh, and the, of the animal. And then in three, you will have a, this one, severe impair, uh, severe uh, precis of one of the hind limb or both of the hind limb have score, score two. And if the disease progress further, then um, we uh, animal die at about stage four or score four, or we have to sacrifice, we, are not, we can't keep the animal in that severe uh, condition. So this, this is the, uh, this, this, anim, uh, this model was developed in our lab. And then we actually, this again, over, uh, overview of the study, again, is, uh, we have differentiated NSE from MSE and then labeled them again with the same, same dye. Uh, Oh gosh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, then we injected these, these into the uh, tail vein of this 
EAE animal policy at stage or score one or two and two. And then we analyze, uh, we monitor the animal for eight weeks and, uh, and uh, did the um, behavioral assay or analysis. And then after that, we sacrifice the animal and perform these post translation transplantation analysis um, as listed here. So this is, I wanna uh, um, spend a minute uh, to see what happens then when we, a behavioral assay, when this is the onset of the disease, when we inject the MOG into the animal, in about 10 days, the red line shows the onset of the disease, as you can see, okay? And it progress. Um, and of course, it, then if it reaches beyond the score, this is the scale of the clinical score. And if it reaches five, then we have to sacrifice the animal uh, or they will die by themselves. So at disease, as disease score one and two, one and two, we injected MSE and NSE. Okay, so this is this, this lines, two lines shows the, this is the MSE, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is the NSE and these are the MSE. So basically red or um, this purple is the M MSE. And then this is the score one uh, injected animal the light blue and the dark blue. Please look at the dark blue are the one which are NS, MSC, pardon me, MSC, and the light blue are the NSC, okay? Uh, neural stem cells, all right? And you can see that, and this is the control. And now you can, I hope you can ma uh, manage that. What I'm trying to say that when we have injected NSC at score one, the cell condition improved to close to normal, basically. And this was reflective of when we, another mayor of this uh, onset of disease is that the animals started to lose weight. Of course, they would be not able to, you know, they have impairment, but they will also lose the weight as you can see. This is the green is the normal animal and the red is the animal with the, which has been um, treat, um, which has the disease. And when we treated with the NSCS score one, again, you can see this is the light blue and the gain of weight suggested uh, confirming their neuro, uh, beha um, uh, neuro behavior of the animal in which the recovery was demonstrated. After this um, um, eight week uh, neuro behavioral studies, we then sacrificed the animal. And then we um, again, uh, re um, the removed the um, various um, parts of the brain, um, cerebellum cortex and spinal cord of the central nervous system. We also, I actually analyze uh, other like spleen, uh, spleen and blood and lungs and so forth. Uh, but this one's showing the uh, control. You know, this is the section or cut for the brain and the spinal cord and you, you cord. And then you can see that pretty um, consistent um, uh, um, structure of the of the, uh, the, the control animal. That means these are normal animal, healthy animal. However, when the disease was induced, EAE was induced, you can see the, the infiltrate. The, the, this is what exactly happened in immune, uh, MS as well. The immune cells will inf infiltrate the brain, it will break the blood brain barrier and in, uh, enter into the brain and make these inflate plaques. And you, these are shown by these um, blue, blue um, arrows. And the, the arrows greater, the, uh, you can see that there are more in the spinal cord. And that's what happened in particularly in this EAE model. However, when we treated the animal, the EAE animal with the MS, 
MSC or NSC, you can see that the plaques or these infiltrates are significantly re reduced. And this is quantitatively shown here. You can see the red, red bars are showing the EAE um, controls. Obviously, there was no uh, infiltrates. And you can see the significant reduction in the infiltrates in almost all of the uh, three section of the brain, um, the brain cortex and uh, cerebellar two section, and then the spinal cord as well. We then also look at the effect of the transplanted cells on the expression of immune cells. So the infiltrate, infiltrates are actually uh, due to the immune cell. These immune cells are leukocytes, and which are represented by this green uh, immunostaining, these CD44 and macrophages, which is a CD68, uh, these red, and also T cell, CD, CD3E, which is this one here, or this one in the brain and spinal cord. And you can again see that in the control, obviously there is no stain for this, uh, for these um, um, antibodies. However, uh, in EA, you, got, you have a lot of uh, the, the immune um, stain for the immune cells. And this is just the extrapolated one. And, then, and there here in the MSE, there is a sign, then significant reduction in the, oops, sorry. When do that back, hold on, okay. All right, and then in NSE, you can see that there is significant reduction in the, uh, the, these immune cells infiltrating, infiltrating into the brain. And that is obviously quantitatively shown here, fluorescent intensity shown, um, and you can see here in the brain and the spinal cord. In both cases, the immune infilt cell infiltrate were significantly reduced. We then also look at the effect of the transplanted cells on the, uh, oh gosh, I will, I had to rush then. Uh, on the immune regulatory cells, uh, these are the cells which actually uh, regulate the immune response. They're called Treg and Th17. Th17s are the one which actually cause this, what we call the uh, cytokine storm in COVID. One of the problem and even currently problem which we are facing is COVID. Uh, the, um, the, the, this, um, um, the, the CH, uh, TH17 cells are responsible for producing these IL-6 and which can then cause the, um, the multiple organ damage and similar problem happens in actually in this MS as well. As you can see that the levels of these cells were disrupted in the, uh, this is the normal in the blood, in the red one is showing the EAE and this is the MS treated and this is NSE treated uh, blood. And again, spleen also, this is the normal MS um, and EAE and blue are again, and uh, uh, MS and, and uh, uh, MSE and NSE. And in brain, you can see that it, this is other way around. In the normal, you don't have these cells. Uh, these are Treg, but in EA, they go up, increased. But when we injected the cell, their, their level started to reduce, but not that significantly as indicated. However, in the spinal cord, it is significantly reduced. Same. On the other hand, um, unlike uh, uh, this blood and spleen, the TH17 goes up, as you can see in the blood and spleen, also in the brain how, uh, and the spinal cord, but their level start go down when we injected the cell, particularly you can see the, when we have NSC. So it, see, it, it's, it seems that the NS, or it shows that the NSC restored Treg level in the blood, spleen, and spinal cord, uh, whereas uh, the, they have a more prominent effect also in reducing the uh, TH17 cells. Um, and their effect is in more 
in case of NSC than MSCs. We also look at the histology. As you can see, the, uh, um, the, by staining with the Luxal Fast Blue, which stained the, um, uh, the, the myelin uh, layer or myelin. Uh, and you can see these are uh, controlled more blue that means there is a more myelin. When AE, they're less blue, their myelin is gone or reduced. And in MSE, the, 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 you can see the color is back in the brain, cortex, cerebellum, spinal cord. NSE, it is increased even more. You can see that. So there is a recovery of the myelin also um, in this case. And then we finally, um, uh, we also look at the effect of the transplant cell, the only expression of human cells in there. So we, uh, in, the, in the central nervous system, so quickly going over, we again stain with the cell-specific uh, antibodies. As you can see, the control, there is no, uh, the, um, the, this human nuclear antigen is a human specific. And there is no red, uh, you know, this uh, antibody uh, staining found in the the, the the control which was not injected but in look at you can see also there is none in the eea but when we have uh, we treated with with uh, the ms animal treated with the mse you can see the uh, an, uh, red stain and specifically in nse you can see a lot of red stain when red stain combined with the o4 which is the oligodendrocyte uh, markers uh, are oleg2, which also uh, oligodendrocyte marker, and the, the red and green will turn yellow. And that you can see that these cells are basically differentiated to oligodendrocyte as well as into the uh, TUJ1, which is a neural marker like a neuron and so forth. So we 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 what we think uh, are, what is happening is the the NSE promoted higher expression of two one or like two and four indicating that both neural and glial differentiation is occurring in the brain. Same was in the case of the you can see also in the spinal cord again NSE you have plenty of yellow stain you can see that which is a combination by the co-localization co of the oleg uh, and, and the HNA. Uh, we also look at the spinal cord, um, um, the, 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 transpl uh, the effect of the transplanted cells on the expression of neurogenesis. And we find these are the neurogenesis marker. And you can see the blue are the one which are you should be focusing on and as see, treated animal, and there are really a lot more higher expression in, uh, in those uh, indicating that the, these are the early neurogenesis marker, intermediate and late markers. You can see them that there is significant in up regulation of these markers, suggesting that active neurogenesis actually is happening. So we also uh, look at the, what is the mechanism of this, um, uh, a neuro regeneration is or regeneration is, and we find that there are the BDNF and GF, uh, FGF, uh, which are produced by the NSE. They are able to activate this BDNF uh, and FGF pathway because we also found that RAS, PI3K, and AKT genes were upregulated, which I didn't point out um, uh, because of the time constraint. And also similarly, the FGF signaling pathways are regulated. They are responsible for then the cell survival as well as neuroprotection and as well as the neural and glial uh, differentiation of the transplanted NSE in the um, central nervous system uh, of this EAE animal. I think I would probably have to cut it down here. I may not be able to complete the or go to the next one. So I'll summarize this, that the, in, in this uh, study, we find that NSE not only slowed, uh, but also reversed the EAE disease. 
uh, and also NSE exhibited greater survivability and proliferation than MSE, and NSE were more uh, if efficacious than MSE in restoring Treg and Th17 levels. NSE promoted remyelination in the uh, central nervous system and they were also more efficacious than MSE increasing neurogenesis and the BDNF and FGF signaling pathway may be involved in the uh, promoting the cell survival and differentiation of NSE in vivo. Uh, I think I, I, there will be 20, 15 minutes, 20 minutes more if I have to cover that, but I think my time is seem to be up. So I will try to stop here um, uh, with this little acknowledgement so I can give the credit to the people who have actually done the most of the work. Um, these are results are not published yet. So I, I wish maybe another time I can get the chance to talk about that. Let me go, where is it? Hold on. My computer is not giving, uh, please give me. Okay, here we go. This is my acknowledgement that the lot of the work which I described here is was performed by Namisha, Christina, and uh, Christina, other Christina McKee. Uh, we have sometimes, there were four Christina in our group. So we named them Christina, Tina, Christina two, Christina three, so forth. So, uh, but there are many other uh, students who were involved in this study, but we also have the help of the, our IBC, IRB and IACOC. Uh, these are the committee which regulates our behavior, animal behavior, also they test the animal behavior as well. Uh, then some other people, particularly, I would like to acknowledge that uh, Suleiman Kojan is a physician who did this um, uh, help us in MS study and this MIC or IVD study. I didn't talk about the Mike Tracy and George William. They have helped uh, about the, uh, the, the retinal uh, studies, but I didn't talk about that. And um, some help from the Wayne State and Providence also. They are the, these folks are very nice. They provide us the um, umbilical cord uh, samples and so forth. And there are some help from the, our, our own um, and the Providence IRB um, and IACOC as well, um, animal, um, IACOC, which is an animal care committee. And with that, I, some funding from these sources which are listed here. With that, I would like to uh, end here so that you can have some time to ask questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the informative lecture. So, sir, we do have a few questions. Sure. Uh, so, Mr. Nadeem Altaf is asking, uh, can nucleus pulposus be regenerated through implanting stem cells? I'm talking in future perspective. Yeah, this is what I we hope. That is, we can treat them with this uh, NPC uh, cells. And this is a we are actually doing a, a small animal study we have performed, but we are uh, in the process of doing this a goat or a pig study. We are um, in the Provident Hospital. We are in the process of actually starting that. And once that approved, uh, but once that is done, then we would be able to get an approval for the clinical trial from FDA. So we approach the FDA to, for actually to do that. To, to take this to, to clinics or to clinical uh, study. And, but they have asked us that you need to show, um, do some uh, the, uh, large animals studies to ensure the safety as well as efficacy of our approach. Once, once this is done, then we will be able to um, do this in humans. Did, that's the answer. Did you get the answer then? Uh, 
Hello? 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 Are you not hearing me? I can't hear you. Hello? Yes, sir. I think there was some technical difficulty. We can hear oh. you now. Okay, I'm sorry. Did you hear my answer or no? No, sir, we couldn't hear it. Can you please okay. repeat that? Thank okay. you. Okay, the answer, answer is that, yes, uh, we are performing a large animal studies at the Providence now, uh, where we will be, we are, we are planning to use the um, a goat and, uh, or a pig and, uh, model where these uh, NPC cells will be injected. And if those studies, uh, which we hope will be successful, then we can approach. We actually have approached the, um, the FDA and they, they would like to have a large animal study before they can, we can take these studies to clinic or for clinical trial. So that is what our goal is. Yes, we can use this NPC to regenerate the nucleus pulposus in human. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's another question. Is there any other useful cell line apart from rabbit cell line? We are not using a rabbit cell line. We're using human cells. Is that maybe was not clear that we are, we are using a rabbit model, um, degenerating the rabbit disc, and then injecting the human cells. And they are the one which are regenerating the intervertebral disc. Right, thank you, sir. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, th there's another question. Uh, does irregularities in human microbiome cause MS? Yes, there has been some suggestion that that contributes to, to MS but it could be other way around. It could be due to MS, there is a, um, there is a, a problem with the microbiome as well. Uh, and sir, another person is asking, uh, what can be the possible reason for better activity of nucleus pulposus cells and neuronal stem cells in case of uh, degenerative disease and multiple sclerosis autoimmune disease respectively at the molecular level? What is the possible effect? Poss possible effect, as I, as I mentioned in intervertebral disc, they can produce the uh, nucleus pulposus or the component of the nucleus pulposus like a gag or the, um, or the improvement in the cellular, cellularity and structure and improvement in the water content, gag content. That is what they, the, the injected cell can contribute. Same way in case of MS, the MS is a, as I mentioned, this is autoimmune disease. Uh, it causes a inflammatory response and which leads to increase in the cytokines, uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine. And the cells which were injected there, if they can produce the anti-inflammatory uh, response or cytokine, that will minimize the, if, um, the disease uh, onset or reduce the disease onset. And also if they can improve the myelination, they can then insulate the uh, damage uh, 
uh, neuron or the nerve fibers or axons, and that will help to, 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 to basically recover, and which is not possible with the drugs. So is that the answer? Did you get that? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So there are a few more questions. Shall I take them? Sure, sure. Okay. Okay, sir. So one person is asking, there are many ethical concerns regarding using human stem cells. Do we ignore them for treatment purposes? The ethical concerns. Yes, ethical concerns are if we're using the embryonic stem cells. And that is, a, that is what actually our earlier studies, which I didn't mention, work using embryonic stem cell. We use embryonic stem cell to differentiate um, or study them for, for example, retinal uh, regeneration. In 2009, we published one paper or a couple of papers actually. Uh, but then because of these uh, ethical issues, the people are concerned about the uh, generating the embryonic stem cell from the embryo even though most of the cell lines which have been used or we used, they were from the discarded embryos. Um, and, and nevertheless, there has been ethical issues. And in, in addition to that, there is a technical problem also that embryonic stem cells can form teratoma. And that is a problem. Uh, even if one escape uh, uh, embryonic stem cell, despite the fact you differentiate them, then they could cause problem, serious problems. So we, the use of um, mesenchymal stem cell pose no ethical issues because the M M mesenchymal stem cell uh, and the hematopoietic stem cell, they have been actually uh, transfused in leukemia patient for many, many years after the, uh, after the treatment or chemotherapy, uh, you have to replenish the MSC and H, uh, HSC hematopoietic stem cell by actually using cold blood, or even if you can isolate from the peripheral blood, you can use them as well. So that is not an issue with the MS. That's why we are more interested in now studying using MSCs rather than the ESCs. Right, Next. thank you, sir. Uh, and there is a question from Dr. Vaseem. He's saying, as you mentioned in the start that we can transplant MSC in non-vascularated tissue, but being stem cell researcher, I transplanted MSCs directly into the pancreas, but the transplanted cells disappeared within 10 days. How can we overcome this limitation? Yeah, <clears throat> well, that is a, there is a, um... Uh, again, that's a problem. Uh, you have to tra transplant the cells which can have a niche or survival, uh, provide a niche with, in which they can survive. Uh, in general, when you transplant these cells, they can be flushed out by the, um, uh, this, uh, the, from the vascular system. Um, th that is not unusual. Um, that happens. And there is also a rejection as well. There could be a potential rejection as well. So many, many can, uh, uh, many, many causes can happen. And uh, as a result, then even uh, it has been suggested that a multiple, um, multiple injection might be the way to, to, to treat some of the diseases where the, uh, the, the cells um, which have been injected, uh, they have been flushed out, or they may not even survive for that too, uh, for too long. So th th this is what our approach was, that if, if we have injected like MSCs, mesenchymal stem cell into brain, they're not gonna survive too long. We did show that they do survive for a few, uh, few, few, few weeks, but nevertheless, our studies were limited. So if we are looking for a year or so or six months, they may not, they're not going to be surviving there because there, are, there is no niche for the MSE to survive. However, NSE are found, nucle uh, the, the neural stem cells are found in the brain or 
or the central nervous system. So therefore, if we inject them, their their survivability is likely. So this is a this is a, what the compatibility could be another issue uh, that immune immune the animal immune system can react to the transplanted cell and they can clear that uh, foreign uh, cell as well. Thank you so much, sir. So there's just one last question. Uh, this person is saying that he's an MSc enthusiast working in the area for about eight years. There are two important paradigm shifts in MSc research in recent times, one being the shift towards lineage differentiated cells for cellular therapy, while the other one being use of released products like exosomes. Which yeah. one weighs more in your expert opinion? Well, it depends on uh, exosomes are not going, they can have a paracrine effect. They can have indirect effect because exosomes are not cells. They are the part of, they could have RNA and they could have some protein uh, and, uh, and some, some other molecules from cellular mole uh, component, uh, parts of the cell, but they, they are not per se cell. So therefore, if we are to, we are, depends on, <coughs> excuse me. If our goal is to just um, promote um, a paracrine effect and something can be worked out, um, endogenous um, cells can be facilitated by like, for example, uh, neurotrophic factors. Um, they can, if we, they can promote endogenous uh, cells to to regrow or promote their growth. Then exosomes are very good; they can be used. However, when it is it comes to the, uh, you need have a have the cell uh, to regenerate a tissue, um, uh, and that only can happen by injecting the, the cells and not by the exosomes. There is a combination of fact that sometimes you can have a um, cell plus the exosome and that can promote or faster recovery. That is possible, combination of both. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you for this very informative and interesting lecture. And thank you all the participants for joining us today. I hope that we have taken all the questions. So with this, we will be closing this uh, session uh, and you will all receive your certificates in a few days. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Um,